Jen, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you, Annie, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I know you've been on this huge and deep journey of self-discovery and transformation. I want you to take us back to the moment that started you on this trajectory, because I know like many of our, our listeners, our audience, you probably started off on a path that was very, quote, normal. Mm. And you, you probably did all the things you were supposed to do, but mm-hmm. something happened that changed your traje- trajectory. So take us to that moment. Yeah, it was, let's see, 2017, May of 2017, so four, seven years ago, that my father passed away. It really caused me to pause my, pause my life. I had moved through life and de- did all of the things, right? I went to college, went to graduate school. I had got married. I had three kids. I bought the house. I had the career, did all of the things. I had the success. I had the the, the money sort of at that point, although we went through some other challenges. But when my father passed away, it was almost as if something in me mutated. <laughs> you know, I had this moment of, it's, it's so cliche, but wow, life is short. And if, it, and if I get the blessing of having a long life, how do I really want to live it? And that first question began to transmute into a domino, a cascading effect of questions. Well, well if I don't want to live my life this way, how do, how do I want to live it? And why don't I want to live my, the, my life this way? Well, really at the core, when I peeled all of that away, it was, who am I? <laughs> and I remember calling my mom as I was kind of working through this process and being like, mom, I just, I've lost myself along the way. I abandoned myself in lots of little ways to comply with a religious structure, to comply with a societal structure, to to fit into a marriage that was good, but wasn't really in alignment with the core of who I was. And I, so I called my mom just kind of like, you know, I'm searching, like, who am I really? Who am I at the core? And my mom just responded with, um, you are who you've always been. And there was something about the way she said that, that was like, all right, who have I always been? Who is really at the core of that? And so that led me on a journey of connecting, coming back home, really connecting with self. And as I began to get more and more connected with the truth of who I was, that's when it took the courage, right? Because it was like the the risk to remain tight in that bud, the bud that I have lived in my whole entire life, was more painful and more great than the courage that it took to start shedding and letting go. There is also this place of like owning our desire, knowing what my desire is and where it comes from. It's the first step is not abandoning self. And then it's going, oh, this is my desire. And finding this sort of delicious space of holding that desire and owning that and then receiving, which is, I found in my work and working with others, one of the biggest challenges, it tends to be, okay, now I know maybe what I want, but do I think I'm worthy of receiving it? Am I comfortable enough? Can my nervous system handle receiving what my friends have for me, what the universe has for me, what life has has gifted me? Um, and I think that's a lot of times what keeps us from, it's a piece of that courage, you know, of the Absolutely. unfolding, but then the reception is is an additional yes. piece of that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Tell me about the feminine and the masculine, because I know this mm. is a big part of your work. And this is a mm-hmm. part that I am starting to discover. I think for Gosh, so many years I was out of touch with the feminine and I actively stuffed it down. I didn't have a single oh, yeah. thing in my closet because I thought <laughs> that's too weak. That represents the feminine in me. And I don't want any part of that. I am all about achieving and yeah. the masculine, like I, I, re- growing up, I would much rather have been a tomboy than a girly mm. girl. And I worked mm-hmm. so hard at that perception and that identity. But now I've started to embrace that both sides in me, the masculine and the feminine. Tell me about that in your work, because I know that's such a huge part of what you do and how you help people 
to create this transformation and to find their true authenticity. You know, there are lots of different words that we can use for it. And very transparently, I've sort of struggled around what language to use because because I don't want to exclude people from the conversation or isolate them. And so I'll just start by saying when I refer to masculine and feminine, it is not gendered. It's not male and female. It's qualities, like you said, that we all have within us. And for people that are new to that conversation, maybe an easy way to think about it is right brain, left brain. So left is logical and linear and achieve achievement oriented and goal oriented. And, um, and right brain is sort of the creative, connective, vulnerable, sensual side of things. And, you know, I think it's very, very common because of uh, the way our society is set up that we, we've been rewarded to function in our left brain and or in our our logical masculine energy. We've been rewarded financially. We've been rewarded in promotions. Um, you know, and I think that this is a part of our society's evolution that a lot of the structures have been typically, they were male created, male led, masculine, and now I am kind of equating it to gender. But historically speaking, that's what it was. And then, and then women were entering that world that was ma- masculine forward. And in order for us to succeed in that world, we needed to fit and self abandon. And and honestly, I you know the more that I'm diving into this work, I feel like it's it, a lot of men have done the same thing. They have an inner feminine that they've felt that they've needed to abandon to succeed in that structure in that world. Um, which is don't be too emotional. The the feminine's biggest wound is that she'll be too much, too emotional, too sensitive, too soft. The masculine's biggest wound is that that the, the, they won't be enough. You know, I won't have enough to succeed. I won't have enough power, enough of this. And so the healthy version of that is really bringing union to the inner masculine, inner feminine so that we can show up more whole. And it's, you said that earlier. And what I think, we're at right now is a sort of a precipice and whether people are into astrology or not, we are entering a new era, the Aquarian age, which is um, more feminine dominant, which is more focused on connection and collaboration and synarchy instead of hierarchy. And so how do we succeed as a team? How do we um, collaborate instead of compete? And and that is, I'm I'm talking to people who are literally sort of waking, they're waking up one day and going, wow, there's something in me that just can't do it this way anymore. I just can't do it the old way anymore. Which isn't to say that we throw out all of the old systems and structures. To me, I'm using the word reintegrate or remember or uncover the feminine so that we're bringing that back in to a union that'll happen within Tell me what awakening means for you, what you, maybe what you've seen in your life and maybe Mm. what you have seen with the people that you've worked with. You know, uh, awakening, the opposite of being awake is to slumber, right? And when I look back at my life pre that moment, again, in hindsight, I was walking through life in a bit of a slumber, slumber, right? I was, I was living in a way that was meeting the standards that I grew up with, right? So I'm doing this thing. I'm just like I had laid out earlier. I'm going to school. I'm having the kids. I'm getting married. I've got the house. I've got, I'm focusing on retirement. I'm doing the things. And to me, it it, it felt a little sleepy looking back. And at the time, it was all I knew, right? And and I think oftentimes when I look at myself or other people who have this this awakening that happens, you know, I think we used to call it, I'm going to say often, I think it is sort of this midlife crisis slash chrysalis moment, right? Or, or a crisis in life that happens. You know, if you look at the cycle of transformation in any, we, we constantly are going through the cycles of transformation. You can see it in your business. You can see it in your personal life. You can so just on a on a non-spiritual level, disruption is what causes transformation. So we're going through like a healthy normal cycle and something comes in and the crap hits the fan and then we got to go, what is happening? And you can see that, you know, if your listeners are thinking of their business, when has that happened in their business? That usually causes an inward, okay, so we've got to stop and investigate. 
why did this happen? What's happening? What's happening in the industry? What's happening in the marketplace? How can we shift? How can we transform? And then out of that, out of that inward journey, out of that inward chrysalis, something new is born. And in that process, we can call it illumination. We can call it an aha. We can call it a, a innovation in business. So when I think about my life, my inner life, my inner world, not just my outer world and business, the awakening to me is is being illuminated to something that that I couldn't see before that enlivens that that higher intelligence to help us make the decisions and live the life by design that we want to live because we're a part of this wildly intricate ecosystem. So awakening to that, awakening to what that means, awakening to the power of life and that versus me just getting up, clocking in, clocking out, going to sleep, making money, getting up, you know, <laughs> that's slumber to me. <laughs> okay, final question before we move into the last part of our show that okay. I have for you is, okay, so let's say the listener is listening to this and they're thinking, this all sounds amazing. I would love to go on a journey of self of transformation and self-discovery, but I'm kind of stuck where I mm. am. I love what you're saying, but what the first step? This seems so like so much. Mm. What do I even do as a first step? What would you say to them? Um, that is just classic. You know, I think that's the classic stuck is like the biggest word that I would describe for myself where I was and then how did I get there. I like to start people on a really an intuitive vision. How do we connect to a vision that is actually I pull from self subconscious. So um, there are tools that we can use that help to get at our subconscious. You know, 90 some percent of our brain is subconscious and the rest is logical forward thinking. And so we have very little access in our daytime thinking to the fullness of what actually is residing in our brains. So I like to take people through an exercise that is fully immersive to connect them with a vision of who they want to become. You know, I, in my work, got very, very great at setting goals of what I wanted to achieve. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that, but there's what do I want to achieve? But then associated with that is who do I want to become or how do I want this life to feel? How do I want my days to feel? And so I really like to start with who do you want to be? How do you want to live? So we create a really vivid vision around that and we look at where are you at right now and what's the gap to getting there? How does this future version of you show up? How does she or he make decisions? How does he or she walk into the room and what's the delta between the two? And then we develop a really strategic plan to get from here to there. And I, you know, I think it coincides with the what do you want to achieve? It's not to abandon goals or sort of um, smart goals or ways that we can uh, attach metrics to it. But I think we've, I'll, well, I'll speak for myself. I, th I think a lot of us have done things sort of inside out. It's, well, what, what do I want to get? And then who do I need to become to get that thing? And that is where we abandon ourselves. We arrive at the thing, we hit the goal, we achieve the thing. And then often we're going, oh, well, why am I not happy? I got the thing. Why am I not happy? Well, because we're really, probably many of us haven't done the work to go, well, who do I want to be? And how do I want to feel? And how do I want my days to look? And so it starts with creating that and then figuring out how to line that up with the business goals, with the leadership goals, with the metrics, um, and then peeling it back. And we, then we walk the path. So I know that some of our listeners are probably going to want to follow up with you and perhaps look at take a look at more of your work and or yeah. work with you. So share mm -hmm. with the listener, if they did want to follow up, what's the best place that they can go? My Instagram is the, the place social media wise that I spend the most time on. If you want to hear a little bit more of my personal story, uh, the jenniferbriggs.com is my website and you can get a hold of me through there too. So my podcast is The Whole Shebang. So I am on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, everywhere that you can listen. And we're really focused on topics around personal transformation and uh, the framework of the feminine and masculine and um, conscious capitalism and leadership and things like that. And we'd love to get a follow for anybody who's interested in learning more and just uh, connecting in that community there. Yeah, amazing. Well, I have definitely become one of your latest podcast fans. I'm going to binge listen 
to the whole thing. I was scrolling through all of the topics. I'm like, yes, got to add this one. Yep. Want to listen to this one too. So I have a feeling or you're going to be in my ears a lot. <laughs> Jen Brin, most of the podcast, the whole shebang, intuitive transformation architect, coach, mama, leader, and so much more. Jen, thank you so much for being here with us and our listeners today and sharing your infinite wisdom with us. Mm, Annie, thank you for having me. This was a genuine pleasure. I appreciate it. Mm.